well, doing and sharing in order to encourage young people was the title that the organizers of the conference thought in for my presentation. Uh, but they, apart from being the organizers and the coordinators of Simula project, are also my colleagues. And well, when you work in a friendly environment, that sort of thing happens. And I forgive them everything, or almost everything. At first, I thought in changing it and trying to adapt it uh, even more to the whole conference or to my own presentations. And I used to get to things like uh, getting science and technology close to young people and students, or how to awaken curiosity and vocation between students towards science and technology, or uh, new methods and resources uh, for science uh, education. But finally, uh, thinking deep about it, uh, I thought this was actually a perfect uh, introduce uh, because this is exactly what I was going to, was what I'm talking, uh, I will going to talk about, about doing and about sharing. I would like to start uh, underlining that Eluyar is not an university, is not a school, is not a research center, and it's not a governmental organization. That's to say, it's not an educational organization. Instead, uh, we are a private project, a non-profit private project, um, working on the public engagement with science and technology for an active and a critical society with a well-based judgment. I wanted to mention this before starting because I thought this was a um, distinctive, di distinctive feature uh, regarding the presentations coming after me and because I think it puts the um, explanation into, a, into the real context. This mission written down there, uh, public engagement with science and technology, uh, it's exciting uh, and a very hard and a great challenge at the same time. Uh, this, is, this is not something new, uh, or it's not something that we have come to uh, a few months or even a few years ago. But it is the objective that funda the Foundation has been working on for, since it was born 41 years ago. It seems contemporary, isn't it? But it's, it's been a constant in, in Eluyar for all these years. And uh, how did we start? Oh, no, I wasn't there at that time. <laughs> how did we start working on this direction? Um, well, printing a magazine on the first place. These pictures here show the evol evol evolution of the, of the magazine in the last, well, it's got this more or less the same age as the own foundation. And uh, that's the number zero, more or less 40 years ago, and that's the number the last edition of this of this month. I want to mention here, uh, this project has got its birthday exactly this month, September 2013, when we have printed the number 300 of the of the magazine. The director of the magazine is is here today. In case you want to chat with her in a break or whatever, that's her. <laughs> Well, this activity, disseminating science uh, and society, science and technology uh, to the general pu public uh, by uh, written press, led us um, led us to explore different channels in order to link a build bridges between science and research and uh, society. And today, uh, nowadays, we broadcast a TV program, 
we broadcast a radio program, we feed and manage many uh, websites, and also, of course, we, we keep uh, printing our, our magazine, among many other projects. But this, all this has nothing to do with uh, getting science and technology close to young people, hasn't it? Well, maybe there's some young youngsters and students um, uh, behind these this, uh, projects, but it's not the, the usual public uh, objective. But this is um, where we come from and from where we have built a strategy uh, to bring science and technology and research close to um, young people, children, young people, or students. Uh, this way hasn't been easy at all. And these two pictures here, as I said, this transition uh, wasn't easy at all. And these two pictures here show how, in the year 1999, Eluyar started printing a, a magazine uh, for young people, also with the objective of uh, well, uh, disseminating and communicating science and technology. Uh, this, uh, I, I've scanned, I scanned these, these papers this week because we didn't have, have them in the digital edition. And when I was reading it, uh, it sounds it very actual, actually, because even if it's 15 years ago, uh, the, this uh, picture on the right describes the idea of the project and exactly says uh, what we have been talking about uh, here this morning and we'll keep talking during the day, how s uh, students felt far away from science and technology, thought it was uh, diffic a difficult subject, was not uh, between their plans to develop a career in this file that was right on there 15 years ago. And uh, that, that was the, the first idea that came to us. Uh, the magazine was the first idea to come to us uh, in order to start changing that well, reality, shall we say. Well, <laughs> this, um, this is the, the team, the science unit team in Eluyar Foundation. I always uh, take advantage to introduce them every time I do a presentation. Um, well, most of us, well, oh no, not, not most of us, all of us have got um, science, dif scientific, different file, files, but scientific uh, studies or uh, communication uh, studies. That used to make sense uh, at the end of the day we used to uh, sort of work on science, jour science journalists. Um, and maybe that's the reason as well why the first project uh, we considered uh, to bring science and technology also to students and young people was to print a magazine. And I, as I said, um, that this, this transition was not easy. The project Gaste uh, Eluyar, what means in Basque, Young Eluyar, so not very attractive name either, <laughs> uh, didn't last for very long. And I must admit here today that even us, uh, people wasn't really comfortable doing that job. And here we have like sort of at first con conclusion, uh, in, terms of, in terms of communication in any file, which is that the objective public, public must really make the difference uh, when deciding the way, the language, the code, and the rules we use to, we use to, communi to communicate. Uh, and this uh, is, well, rule number one in terms of journalists or communication, and it seems very logical. 
but uh, we are very used to see how, um, I don't know, in conferences, presentations, or even guide tours in museums, uh, the um, uh, dialogue and the explanations are not really adapted to uh, the age of the public we've got in front. So that was the, least, the, re the lesson we learned uh, uh, at that time uh, as well. Well, today, 15 years later, uh, the situation is completely different uh, at Eluyar. Mm, right now, there is a group of people inside our team fully dedicated working on uh, projects directed to children or young people or students in, in general. In all this way, we've learned a lot uh, and it has been hard for us to do this transition as well, but things have changed. And, well, and pictures as well. <laughs> Uh, and well, I've tried to sum up the methodology or the formula we follow in order to do this, uh, do this work. Uh, and I've written here communication, participative activities, life activities, research and uh, networking. First of all, uh, something we didn't stop doing was informing uh, about science and technology, uh, creating um, content, news, articles, interviews, which are written in a very fresh way and, shall we say, with uh, an attractive design and are um, spread um, through social networks, well, online and whatever. This work is the basic work in which we continue for the next activities uh, coming. Particip as for, for example, participative activities where we work to encourage active participation of youngsters in scientific work uh, to develop skills like working on team, ICT skills, gender treatment, or, uh, well, creativity, for instance. Uh, we, we, we've been working on scientific Olympiads, or, uh, well, fe this picture here is a festival, a great party, a big party, where students from 14 and 18 years old have been a whole year working on a research project. And finally, this is this summer, uh, in June, they present their project uh, to the people. They are in the street and people coming through ask them for the work they've done and they, they have to, to explain it. So uh, we really want them to become sort of researchers here. They've been working long uh, and the process itself, it's quite similar uh, comparing to the real process of, the, of what a researcher, a researcher does. We also do life activities. Um, we try here to get in contact uh, with them. All of, all of the other activity um, uh, is online, so we don't really have a direct contact with, with them. And I think we think it's important, and that's why uh, we organize sort of, um, summer camps, scientific summer camps, or experiments in the schools or whatever, activities uh, that Daniel has explained before in Stimula. Two other files interesting, these two pictures belong to these two activities. They are in, this, in a scientific summer camp and or doing some experiments in, at school. They don't do them with their own teachers, but young uh, students, the, uh, the ones um, dressed in white, are university student, students. They are um, fin finishing their, their degree. And, well, they sort of develop the skills of explaining and talking in front of younger students. and. The, the own students like as well to have a, uh, so young teachers. 
So what I was saying, sorry, research and networking are also clue activities, key activities for us. When we say research, uh, every four years we do a perception, interest and vocation studies among students in order to think if the activities we, and initiatives we propose are really well fostered to what they really need and they answer in their, in their uh, inquiries. Or uh, stimula is another example where we really evaluate uh, the incidence of the activities we manage. And I especially wanted to mention networking because um, all the activity uh, directed to the general public I mentioned before uh, give us in Eluya a very privileged overview of the science and research is done in the Basque Country. Uh, the, the contact with universities, research centers, or companies doing research and us is very, very constant and fluent because um, that is what we then tell to the society. And that's it's a very um, value uh, content for us in order to organize these activities with children as well. Because we always try to base our initiatives in the real science and most of them, most of it in local science. So this is what we do and this is uh, how we do it. But uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, most of you here are teachers or come from the educational uh, well, world or organizations. And I have come here today with a an unique and exclusive uh, mission. And it's to ask you for, for an union, a professional union, I mean. <laughs> Um, I know that sometimes understanding each other and working together is not easy. Mm, and we've got some difficulties. I've called this formal education. I hope it's uh, correct. I wanted to say schools, universities, uh, uh, um, educational departments in the governments. And we know and we know that you have very few time to, well, to dedicate to anything apart from the curricular activities. Uh, you do many different tasks apart from itself. Uh, you, man you manage uh, preparations, meetings, uh, family uh, stuff. And you deal with problems that sometimes, well, had really nothing to do or not re they are not very related with, with education itself and not, lo not, very, not big and many resources to do all of this. But on the other hand, uh, you are very powerful people as well because you have a direct contact with youngsters, something that it's very difficult for us, for instance that's a handicap. Also, direct contact with families, and well, Vladimir talked before about the importance and the influence of the, of the families. You're inside, so you can also influence in the education system. And apart from the education, formal education processes and curriculum, you've got a very big offer of material and external activities to complement the curriculum. We, on the other side, mm, keep further from our objective public. That's something we, mm, it's a great handicap for us and something we very often talk about in our team because we really organize uh, activities for children or students when we are not in, co in direct contact with them. That's really difficult sometimes. 
and we have doubts with the approach. Sometimes we don't really know uh, what we think, if it's really appropriate for this uh, stage or this subject, we're farther from this reality. And we ignore sometimes very practical issues like calendar issues, so we don't really know how, when to, to organize an activity, when not. That is also a difficulty for us. In other words, we are unable to work, um, to do our work by our own. We do our, uh, we do our best. <laughs> but we've got advantages as well. Um, we follow a scientific actuality, as we said, as I said before, uh, and we keep close from the main actors, researchers, um, university professors, uh, whatever, government. And that gives us a general overview of the situation. Um, that's, we think, an, ad an advantage for us. And um, we are quite uh, flexible. And this, um, this role as an intermediate agent gives us as well some quite sorts of a, a flexibility to make changes and take decisions from year, one year to another one. This doesn't work, well, stop doing it. We've got this uh, freedom, shall we say. Uh, but working together is, uh, well, uh, s Everything uh, that we talked before shows that working together is the ideal situation. And well, the keys for networking between us, some of them at least, is that we share a common objective and are complementary in terms of knowledge, capacities and activity. Uh, results show that coexistence between formal education system and complementary activities increase the impact in the students. And that together we can easily reach all the files, like for instance, families, politics, uh, new opportunities, or world of work, as Stimula has shown. Well, the list is um, much more, much longer. I didn't really want to, to extend here, but maybe we can keep talking about these benefits uh, during, during the day. Um, here I leave my, my invitation to uh, doing, uh, let's do together, uh, share and net, uh, networking. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, some questions? I have one. Uh, I need you also. <laughs> uh, Maria, I was just wondering, up to date, that's up to today, how much uh, do you think that working with other partners from different countries within the EU, EU has influenced um, how things, uh, and this might be too big a question, operate not only with uh, El Yuhar, but perhaps out towards the, the Basque school system? Mm -hmm. uh, this has been the first time that Eloia has networking, ne networked with um, um, agents and partners, um, well, e European partners, because it's true we've uh, worked before for instance, with Zaragoza University and some people uh, that are here today uh, inside uh, Spain, inside Spain. But it's the same, it's the first time that Eluyar uh, works uh, in an European uh, project. And the considerations we've done uh, in, well in our team is that even if we work exclusively in Basque, and even if we, our main uh, op public objective is Basque country and Basque citizens uh, participating in this uh, project. Let us learn uh, and research and evaluate what we are actually, what we were actually doing uh, in this case, in a similar case in, in concrete. 
and uh, makes a, gives us the keys and clues to um, keep uh, evolutioning and making the proper changes in our in our um, initiatives and projects, and that will obviously uh, influ influence in in our uh, objective uh, public again. So that's like a circle, hmm. and a very rich circle. Hmm. Any other question? Mine is um, about, there is a, a question that in, interests me very much uh, as a person that uh, is involved in, in uh, dissemination and, and science diffusion. Um, well, th there is a, an aspect uh, of um, developing interests of uh, young people or, or general public in science. But also, also science, uh, science uh, dissemination can be for fun, and uh, I, I'm interested in in this point because um, I think the the key point for doing uh, this properly is quality, and I, I think there is a, a lot of of uh, work to do about defining uh, what what are the the um, good quality uh, projects and ideas in science dissemination and diffusion. And uh, well, actually, I love the, the way you work. And, and I think you are uh, in the track for, for designing this quality. And I wanted to, to ask you, what is your idea? Or what could be the, the key points for uh, developing a kind of protocol for knowing what are the, the best uh, uh, projects for, for dissemination and how we can, in some kind, measure the, the quality. In my opinion, it depends on uh, what you think uh, quality, um, quality is for a science dissemination pro uh, project or initiative. In our case, I think uh, quality is uh, very closely related with um, doing a, a really a dissemination really based in a very um, a close criteria, uh, and the science themes are really treated with a very very delicate uh, way. Uh, this, the reality of our uh, public is that um, both our magazine, our TV program, or radio program, even if we say that we direct them to the general public, we don't really know if that's real. Uh, actually, we know that our readers or our uh, people that watches our TV program have got a very concrete perfil. Uh, they are from 40 to 50 something years old. Uh, they've got high education. They're mostly teachers. And uh, they are more men than women. So the question is if they are really the general public or not. Or we are uh, working for that people that are already convinced. Uh, I think we are in that stage uh, still. But you have to decide what kind of public you really want to reach, and that will tell you what kind of dissemination product you should design. Thank you. Other question? Thank you very much, Maria.